and thank you again all for being here and joining our webinar today. This webinar is the IFLA's new professional SIG and also the CPDW webinar together. It's about volunteering in the library. So the title of the webinar is Empowering Communities, the Impact of Volunteering in the Library Field. And it's part of a series that new professionals started in 2012 which is called New Librarians Global Connection Best Practices, Models, and Recommendations, which talks about different topics that are of interest for new professionals. And so because of the International Volunteering Day, this, which is today, we are going to talk about volunteering in the libraries. Um, Laura is going to put a link in the chat, which is going to ask you where you're from. And I will share the screen when I get the results, but before I go there, I wanted to speak a little bit about the privacy in the Zoom. Um, as you might have noticed, we are recording this and the recording will be posted on New Professionals um, YouTube and also the social media. Your microphones are muted, so if you have any questions, put it in the chat. If you have any questions about the webinar, put it in the QA box. If you have any issues with the Zoom, put that in the chat so we can help with it. And so I mentioned that we are going to ask where you're from. Let me see if we have any results that I can share because that's always the fun part to see where people are from. So let's see what results we got. And that is the QR code. I will also participate. So we have people from Asia and Europe and North America. And a few more seconds and then we can switch to the next section of the webinar. Well, again, Thanks for being here with us. It's always nice to have people from all over the world so we can share our different points of views about today volunteering. So our speaker is Barbara Lison, which I probably don't even need to introduce her because everyone knows Barbara, but Barbara has been the past president of uh, IFLA. Uh, she has also been actively involved in um, the German and European Library Associations for many years. She has served as the president of the Federal Association Library and Information in Germany and held a number of senior positions in the European Bureau for Libraries, Archives, and Documentation Associations. And Barbara has always supported the new professional SIG and participated in our IFLA camp. And we are really grateful for her support and that she's here with us to talk about volunteering in the libraries. So Barbara, I will hand over, um, I will stop sharing my screen and hand it over to you. And thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you very much, Paria. That is, <laughs> I was so happy to get your to get your invitation. And I was even happier that I had the opportunity to be with you today. <laughs> thank you very much for everyone who is here and who wants to, well, like, likes to listen to me and speak with me uh, about volunteering. You see, I retired from my daytime job uh, on the 1st of October. So now I'm a, not only a retired president, a past president, but I'm also a, a retired library director. And still I am working as a volunteer. I'm continuing with some of the tasks which I had before, not related to libraries. And people are addressing me, oh, Barbara, we see you are now retired. Couldn't you uh, do this and this and this and this for us? So you see, once you are uh, uh, known as a volunteer, <laughs> you are uh, you are having that, well, I wouldn't say it's stigma. You, you have that image that you want to support people uh, not related to your daytime job. So uh, when you when you start being a volunteer, you might be prepared, uh, you should be perhaps prepared <clears throat> to know this is a lifetime <laughs> position or a lifetime approach. Um, first of all, I would like to <coughs> share my screen with you and start um, <clears throat> my presentation more or less with a 
uh, more general view on volunteering. And then at the end, I would like to come back to, to IFLA. And actually, as Paria already said, I am very fond of the new professional SIG because um, everyone who is in that or has been in that SIG um, knows uh, a lot of about volunteering and also knows about um, a lot about IFLA. And therefore, I'm happy that you are continuing because um, everyone who is in that SIG is the future of the libraries and the future of the users of the library. So that is so important. So now I try to share my screen with you. Okay. Um, I think when you think about volunteering, you also should think about partnering and partnerships. And... Um, I would say, uh, I would like to start my presentation with uh, a saying from Africa. If you want to walk fast, walk alone. But if you want to walk far, walk together. Because when you are volunteering, you are never alone. You are always with other people. You are always with partners. And this is, I think, a very important point that volunteering is not a standalone or not an island a related activity. It is always an activity uh, that relates you to other people. Um, of course, you have to consider about volunteering. What is the benefit for me? Are there disadvantages perhaps also when I start to be a volunteer? And therefore, I have uh, several slides to talk with you about the benefits first. So when you, as I just said, when you are volunteering, it's uh, important that you are a person who likes in uh, so uh, likes to be in social connections. That that means you have to be prepared to talk with other people, to work with other people, in a structure which is not a work-related structure. I mean, a business or job-related structure. But nevertheless, of course, it is always good that you relate with other people and uh, that you can also then be part of a stronger community. And of course, you can extend your uh, personal network when you volunteer. Uh, uh, additionally, you learn a lot from others. You learn a lot from the people with whom you work together and volunteer together. And you also learn a lot of perhaps um, methods of socializing, methods of talking with people. And this is a huge extension, can be a huge extension of your skills that you have. And you can use uh, these extensions also for personal development and of course for your professional life. Being a volunteer also is always uh, eating up your personal time because you have to be uh, at your job where you get your salary. And then additionally, you do something and invest your time uh, not getting money. And therefore, you have to be very careful in balancing uh, the time you need for earning the money you need for your living and also the um, activities that you invest for your volunteer, volunteer um, uh, development. So that means that uh, at the best, of course, you learn a lot about organization, how you organize yourself and how you also uh, organize um, your activities in the environment of other activities. So effective time management is something that you need and that you also can learn. And of course, uh, when you volunteer, you are surrounded by other people, you meet other people, you may meet also people who can support your career. That is not, of course, in the main issue for your activities, but it can happen that, that uh, volunteering enhances your career development because of the networks you have, because your name is known to other people. So that is, an, I think, a very important benefit when you think about, well, I'm a volunteer, but I also want to have a professional career, a serious professional career. Personal growth and self-discovery. You have to reflect about yourself. 
very often, especially when it comes to the time management, when it comes to your priorities. What are your priorities? And of course, sometimes you discover in yourself, in your person, talents that you haven't really been aware of. So it is a really good step forward for self-discovery. Of course, not always, but it can help you. Volunteering or volunteers are volunteering because they want to be helpful, they want to be successful with their activities, and of course, they want to have appreciation. No volunteer is, uh, no, not, I think there are only very few volunteers who are not looking for appreciation for their bringing in their time and their personal uh, personality when they volunteer. So the self-esteem can be uh, underlined and uh, you can also get a lot of recognition from people you haven't known before, but also from people you have known before. Uh, as I said, you are, when you are a volunteer, you are never alone. Uh, most of the time, of course, you might be alone, but the, the community where you work for is a community that consists of several people. And of course, then um, this sense of belonging to a case, to an issue, to something which is important for your life, and not only for your life, but also for the others, gives you a sense of belonging. And of course, you can also uh, bring forward and bring into life your values and your beliefs, because you actively work based on your values and your beliefs. I don't think that there is any volunteer who works not on a basis that it, or works on a basis that would be against their values and um, their interests. But so that means the act of giving your time as a skill as a skilled as a volunteer can have a positive impact on your life and also on the lives of others. But there are also downsides of volunteering. As we said, the time commitment. It can be very time consuming. And of course, we all have our private environment. We have our jobs. We have our families. We might have other tasks um, that we have to fulfill and responsibilities that are there in our lives. So the time commitment can be very challenging sometimes. And of course, unpaid work. Um, it is important that the voluntary work does not come to the point that you do work for which you should be paid. So it, you always have to consider, I think, um, is this still a voluntary um, character or uh, am I misused by others? It is very important to, to not feel being misused by others, that you bring your time unpaid and others are paid for it. Um, of course, you are not always getting new skills. Sometimes your skill development, you are is un, you, are, you are underestimated in your skills as well because uh, you are not paid. So it is important that you not be frustrated with that. And of course, uh, whatever you do in, as a volunteer, it can be emotionally and physically really demanding. And sometimes you don't have the adequate support. You are sometimes quite alone. I just said you are an environment in a in, in a network, but sometimes, especially as in, in special environments or in special situations, you feel quite alone. And of course, um, then your enthusiasm might be decreased. Another thing is uh, conflict and misunderstanding, because there are interpersonal dynamics that are always present. And if these interpersonal dynamics are not favorable to you, um, there can also arise conflicts and um, sometimes misunderstanding is uh, because when you don't talk with each other, then the misunderstanding becomes rather hard to come to overcome. And the personal sacrifices is, of course, you always have to balance between your personal life, your, your, life, your individual life, and of course, uh, the um, issue that you are working for. 
The last thing, uh, as I would say uh, in the um, uh, examples of downsides of volunteering is that when you work for an organization which is not really well organized, that is ineffective, and that can happen, then of course you think you are you investing work into an organization that is not um, mm, delivering very, very well. And then of course you also think that your uh, activities are not delivered very well. And you might come even to the conclusion that there is a waste of time when you are volunteering. So uh, my personal experience and my conclusion is when taking the decision to volunteer, consider carefully your own circumstances, your motivations, your interests, and the boundaries you have. And then you balance your balance. And of course, normally the balance should be uh, equal. But you see, sometimes they are not. And then you have to be aware that this equality should be at least in your own feelings, at least in your own perception of the voluntary work you do. Now, how can you be engaged as a volunteer in IFLA? Look, this is the chart for all the over 50s, 50 professional units that IFLA has. And in these 50, more than 50 units, also the special interest group, like the new professionals, there are more than 1,000, almost 1,200 volunteers from the profession, and they work in their specific knowledge area, sometimes not in their specific knowledge area, then they gain a lot of new knowledge perhaps. And so to be engaged in one of these professional units is uh, time consuming. I'm sure that the standing committee members are really engaged and are um, following their plans and uh, their uh, ideas that they want to bring into practice. And this professional standing committees, they contribute to the expertise, to the activities. And of course, they are a big benefit to the profession globally. And I, I know that people who are listening are already in standing committees. Congratulations and good luck. And you see just an impression of, uh, of volunteers at the World Library and Information Congress at the General Assembly. You see, there is a lot, a lot of people, um, I have to say a lot of women, <laughs> because the library profession is, um, well, is a, a profession that is dominated by women. We see this everywhere. And you see the slogan, we are IFLA also says that the volunteers have a network, they contribute to the network, and they can also profit from the network. And you see, these volunteers are my not my favorite ones, but I love them. The volunteers who work at the World Library and Information Congresses, they come from all over the world, not only from the country where the VLIC, the Library and Information Congress takes place. This is a picture of Dublin of 22, and you see there is people from all over the world. I don't know, maybe someone of you is, is in between there. And it is, I always say when people say, ha, ah, yes, I have to pay for that Congress and the Congress um, participation fee is so high. Then I say, try to be a volunteer and you, you get in a big network, you get a lot to, to know a lot of different people who are also more or less uh, in the same mood as you are. And you work together in a, in a very short way. I mean, it's just, just less than a week, but you meet a lot of people, not only from your fellow volunteers, but also from all the visitors and participants in the Congress. So that is, I think, very, very important for IFLA. Uh, and I think also for those who are working as volunteers. So that was my, my short uh, presentation and my, my short input for the topic, and I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you again for being here with us and um, for speaking about um, volunteering and how it improves our skills and personal development and also how we really need to be careful to balance it and make sure that we don't get burned out by volunteering. And um, 
yes, uh, I, I, I've been with New Professional SIG for a while and it's been a great experience. So what we have now is a very short activity, which Laura is going to put the link in the chat and I'll go ahead and share my screen. And um, we're just trying to see um, for the participants as far as like, what do you think is volunteering? Like, what does the word volunteering mean for you? And then there is the another question after that, that um, I will go ahead and share my screen now so everyone can see the answers and also get the QR code so you can participate. Um, and I think the QR code should be somewhere here. Okay, but the link is in the chat. You should be, oops, where is it? There we go. And here's the QR code in case you have your phone in your hand and you wanna answer it with your phone. You can also do it that way, but. Oh, that's new people. That's a good answer. Yeah, so passionate, new challenges, networking, big heart, caring, working, hobby. So you might see these on our social media. These are really good answers. So I would really like to share it on the new professional six social media so others can also see uh, what we think about uh, volunteering. New challenges, uh, which I think I already read that one. It's moving around, so I'm trying to follow it. Connection, purpose. These are all really good answers, thank you. So I will wait for a few more seconds to see if we get any more answers and then I will go to the next question. Okay, still moving, okay. New experiences, meeting great new people, yes. Outreach, generosity. Oh, these are really good, sacrifice. Thank you for all the answers. These are really good answers. Useful. I think I'm like community. I'm, I'm missing some of them because it's moving around. <laughs> okay. I think it's slowing down. So just a few more seconds and I'll just, oh, moved again. I think the new one is knowledge, if I'm not wrong. Share time, talent, treasure. Okay. Oh, love. I didn't see that one. That was a good answer. Kindness. Heroism. All right, these are really good, thank you. Uh, let's move to the next one, which let's see if it shows up when I, yes, it should show up for you now because I moved to the next slide. And this is just uh, because the next part of this webinar is uh, we're going to have panelists who will be talking about their experience either as a volunteers or experience creating a volunteer program in a library. So it was just uh, helpful for us to know as a participant, have you volunteered before or have you like created a volunteering program? And there are some of you have done both of them. Okay. So I see like a couple of people have volunteered before. So you have volunteering experience and that that's great. You have some people who haven't done either. So Hopefully this uh, webinar is helpful for you. Got about 14 answers, so I will wait a few more seconds and we can start our panel.
think um got one more answer so i see a, a lot of you have volunteered before all right all right thank you for the first part and also for answering the second part and uh, let me have my powerpoint up again and you should be seeing the name of our panelists now. So we have five panelists to date with us. Orna Udanti, he is a school librarian in Zagreb, Croatia, and he's an active member of the Zagreb Library Association, as well as an active member of the new professional SIG. And he's the secretary of the Croatian Reading Association. Then we have Joseph Yap with us. He is uh, earning his PhD at the Doctoral School of Literary Studies at in Budapest, Hungary, and he's a professional librarian and holds the 2023 Excellence Award in the field of librarianship under the Global Filipino Practice and Service category given by the Philippines Federation of Professionals. We have Lisa Go. She is a seasoned professional with 10 years of experience in volunteer management. Lisa has worked in both social service and government settings in Singapore and has extensive experience in engaging training and board onboarding volunteers. She enjoys meeting new people and believes that there are no difficult volunteers, only difficult situations. Lisa strongly believes that there is a role for everyone to play when it comes to volunteers and is passionate about helping individuals find their place in volunteer community. Um, Natalie Gerbeau is a Libraries Network Coordinator in Burgundy, France and former librarian. She's also running the, I hope saying, I'm saying it correctly, Tatulu for a decade a children's bookshop with a books for kids with special needs department. She's passionate about inclusion, diversity, cheese, and penguins. And we also had Neda Movahedipur. She, uh, her job and education background is in engineering and entrepreneurship. She has been volunteering in different nonprofits, mostly related to reading promotion and library, which leads to her writing a book about reading promotion projects in Iran and volunteering has profoundly affected her career. So I'm going to start the questions. And the first question, uh, which Borna, um, probably you wanna go first. What is your experience being a volunteer? I know Borna, you work, you have volunteered in Willick before, if you would like to speak about that or any other kind of volunteering activity that you've done. Um, yes, hi, hello. I hope you can all hear me well. Yes. Um, as uh, Paria said um, about my uh, work with the Croatian Reading Society and with the Zagreb uh, Library Association, uh, not only me, but every active uh, participant of both associations is also a volunteer, um, which is a very important part. And it just shows that um, a lot of the associations, library associations worldwide depend on volunteers. Uh, the same thing is uh, with uh, Ifla Blik. I was a volunteer in Athens in 2018, I believe it was. And I will just share my um, short and quick uh, overview about the process and what I learned. And later on, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the chat. So um, every Ifla Blik is... Um, heavily dependent on volunteers. Uh, that's something that uh, Barbara Lisson also said today, and that's something that uh, at the end of every week, um, they, they tell you it's just very important to have volunteers so that the whole story can work together. Um, as for the volunteering process in the in IFLA uh every December, around December, um, the official IFLA website issues something that's called a call for volunteers. And uh, more or less, literally anybody who has uh, a strong will to come and volunteer can uh, apply for the process. It's very simple, it's very easy, and you get the information whether you have been chosen or not as a volunteer in around three or four months. Um, Something that I have personally uh, learned and benefited from uh, from Ifovlik was uh, the networking uh, thing, the part uh, which is something that is uh, treasured the most. 
uh, you come to a congress where there are uh, hundreds of people, uh, all from your uh, branch of interest, from all over the world, and you have an amazing and uh, once in a lifetime opportunity to meet uh, people who share the same interests as you. You can exchange phone numbers, WhatsApp messages, and later on you can build some connections and friendships. Uh, also, another a um, very important thing of uh, volunteering on uh, Blick itself is the fact that you are uh, free from the registration. So as a volunteer, you don't have to pay for it. That means that after the shifts that you do, uh, you have free time in which you can attend the conference sessions. Another thing that we should uh, always have in mind while we are volunteering that end of the day, it is work. It uh, does take up our free time. And uh, specifically for uh, IFLA Vlik, because it's in every time in a different country, uh, you are required to uh, pay for your own uh, accommodation and pay for your trip. Of course, you can have some room to maneuver with your employee if they're willing to pay for some parts of that, but that's on you. Uh, regardless of that, uh, if Lovelick is really a once in a lifetime experience, I strongly encourage all of you to go to see how it works. It's absolutely amazing. And don't be afraid to volunteer. Uh, even if it's something that you haven't done before, uh, trust me, it's something that's doable. It's something that you can learn easily, and there are always amazing people that will help you on your journey. Uh, this would be all from me for now. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. I will be happy to answer you. Thanks, Borna, and thanks for speaking about your experience in Bulik. I think it's very important. I, um, I, I just attended last year and I was not a volunteer so now after you speaking about it I want to volunteer next year when they have the conference. Um, Neda I know your background was in engineering but you have volunteered in the library so um, what was your experience um, volunteering uh, especially since your background was different? You're curious. Yeah. We are very curious to learn about that. <laughs> Thank you, Paria. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm so glad to be here celebrating International Volunteer Day and sharing uh, some thoughts with you all. Uh, first, the word celebration is respectful to me. It conveys uh, two meanings that are uh, closely related to the notion of volunteering. First, humility, and the second, openness. Uh, when we celebrate a way of resistance and utterance, uh, an action, a product or a service and so on. We admirably uh, remember the process of collective achievements. So honestly, if I want to talk about my voluntary experience, I should tell a shorter story about the uh, HLPR, the library that I've been uh, volunteering there uh, for almost 16 years. Uh, House of Librarian for the promotion of uh, reading among children and uh, Young People is a nonprofit organization affiliated with the EB Iran National Section. It was founded uh, by a family in 2004 to serve as a home for all those involved in reading promotion through innovation, innovative ways. And all uh, three libraries, children, youth, and children's literature have always welcomed everyone interested in this field. Um, I would like to say that major parts of HLPR activities are carried out voluntarily and it is managed by the committee, management committee who are all volunteers and they are uh, professionals from different fields, mostly librarianship, entrepreneurship like me, uh, children's literature, sociology and psychology. And each committee member is selected by the previous one based on their new approach and new uh, ideas that they will bring to the library. So uh, I used to help the, the library based on my organizational skills and my uh, background, I mean, the skills that I had in my job. But I indeed was involved in, in inner uh, activities since uh, one of the projects that we planned there in the library, the Mother's Empowerment Project. 
that were that we had planned uh, this for the members who were the reading cycle participants. This project was planned uh, for members uh, that I told there are reading cycle uh, participants and uh, this uh, this was planned because of two questions that we had uh, at that moment. First, to what extent literature reading could help women's entrepreneurship? And second, how does this project affect consumption culture? This project was carried out for five years as a one-week event. Uh, regarding to project's outcome, it profoundly changed my perspective on social engagement and working with communities. And I could say that uh, from that time, it made me work full time in the libraries uh, since then. And no matter if it is called employment or um, volunteers. Yeah, just this. Thank you. Um, Joseph, I know you also had some volunteering experiences. Did you want to talk about them? Yeah, thanks, Maria, and thanks uh, to my co-panelists. So um, my experience in volunteering is, of course, is, uh, mostly related to our professional work as librarians. And I am happy to say that I was one of the volunteers during the last uh, WLIC. Um, so since the beginning of my career, I, I started to invest and volunteer myself in professional library association. I, I started early with the Medical and Health Librarians Association and the Association of Special the libraries and the Philippine Librarians Association. Now I'm also a uh, part of the Special Libraries Association. So I, I immediately jumped and looked for opportunities for me to be involved in. So there, there are many ways on how we can be part of a volunteer group. Either you saw uh, the call to become a volunteer or someone approached you to join and become a volunteer. And sometimes you cannot just say no if you think it is very noble or valuable. Right. So um, there are volunteer work, let's say for me now, I'm a PhD student, uh, that needs the help of students. So the diplomatic spouses uh, here in Hungary ask us, you know, to help them to receive guests. So volunteering, as they, my co-panelists mentioned and Barbara mentioned, uh, it, it should be embraced wholeheartedly with less complaints, <laughs> if possible. Uh, and uh, it is selfless. You are, uh, you are doing it because you care for an organization or to help others. Uh, I myself consider myself introvert, but when I do volunteer, I become extrovert. So um, um, I volunteered also to establish some libraries from scratch, like small, small libraries. Let's say there are worship and ministry libraries that they want um, their uh, collections to be organized. So let's say um, an another small archives in which we uh, really help them from the scratch from the beginning. So those are the things that I started to be involved with. I, and then internationally, I started to volunteer with uh, IFLA as well. And then even to uh, the Association of European Research Libraries, I also uh, I personally asked them if I can be involved uh, to help them in their organization. So there, and also as an officer of library organizations, you do social civic activities. Maybe that's where the part where you really try to uh, put yourself out there uh, and help others, non-librarians in that case. So that's it. So that's uh, the fun part of being librarian and helping people, not only in your small spaces, but people from um, all walks of life. So there. And do not be afraid to make mistakes, as uh, because when we when we were there uh, as a volunteer in IFLA, WLIC, of course, uh, if it's your first time and you are afraid to do that, um, it we are assured that if you are not sure of what you're doing, just always ask the help of others, ask for guidance, and they will always be there to support you. So that's it. Thanks, Joseph. Um, I, I totally agree. When when you become a volunteer, if you're an introvert, you become an extrovert. <laughs> it happens. Um, for now, um, how would you say that your experience as a volunteer has either helped you with your job or, I don't know, studies maybe? Um, personally, for me, um, it helped me for networking, the thing I was uh, telling you about. Um, when I was in, in Athens, I had the opportunity to meet um, a lot of uh, interesting librarians from my own country. 
uh, we made some contacts and afterwards, like through that, I became the secretary of the Croatian Reading Association. So um, it, it's always nice to, to meet uh, people from your field that um, in other cases, other words, you would not have the opportunity to meet. So it's just like a very, very interesting uh, global melting pot of people that you uh, have a chance to meet in IFLA League, not only in IFLA League, but uh, generally in um, volunteering for other um, purposes. Also, the same goes for uh, volunteering on the uh, IFLA um, platform. The same thing that uh, Barbara said. There are over 1,200 volunteers and uh, lots of different sections. So um, you can find something for yourself, for sure. Thanks, Borna. Um, so we also have two panelists who have experience creating volunteering programs either in, well, in their libraries. So I will now go to the questions that are about creating volunteering programs. And Natalie, I know you have some experience, um, previous experience doing that. Uh, what is, uh, would you like to talk about that? Um, yeah, so um, it, it's a bit... <laughs> It's a um, a very uh, different program, actually. It, it was a program with teenagers. Um, so um, the mayor, as soon as I, I had my new job, it was in a in a village in the French Alps. And as soon as uh, the mayor um, uh, interviewed me, and he said to me, "We've got a, a, a something to do with teenagers. So we you need to actually run a program and try to attract teenagers to the library." And um, it was pretty interesting, actually, because it was really hard to do. <laughs> it was a challenge. And with um, the team I was working with, we've decided to uh, meet teenagers at uh, the bus stop in the village and tell them that we had sweets and, and biscuits and maybe we could talk. It was in March. It was a long time ago. It was more than 10 years ago. And it was in March. And... Um, <laughs> And a few of them, they were pretty interested, maybe in the sweets or in the biscuits. But anyway, they came to the library and they start to eat a little bit of things and they start to talk with us. And I'm, I'm asking them what um, what could we do to make you um, to make you more involved in the library um, life? What how can we help? How, what can we do? Um, so we've started a club, like a, a proper, like a book, not a book club, but a club where we could eat things and, and talk about everything and talk about books a little bit. And after a few months, we had like three teenagers at the very beginning, and then we had 11 of them, which is was a good thing because it was a small village of 160, uh, uh, 1,600 people. Um, and after a while, I'm like, how how can you, well, do you want to be more implied in the library life? What, what, what do you want to do? And we've, we've started to talk about Halloween. Um, and, and they've said to me, maybe we could um, do this story, um, storytelling hour. Maybe we could um, organize something. And we've uh, ended um, with a very big uh, party for Halloween with 130 kids. From the school, and the teenager will um, um, read some books, and they will organize everything. And it was just amazing because they got involved, and they really, um, they were very um, dynamic and very. It was amazing to see them. And after a while, some of them they've asked me how they can become proper volunteers in the library. So they they would be part of um, the welcoming team. They will be. They will help to. I don't know, every task of the library, they will help for it. And it was, actually, it was really a, a magical moment. And it was one of the highlight in my career uh, to see them so really involved with whatever they wanted to do. Actually, they've, they've asked for more things after that. They, they will organize a, a Easter, something for Easter with some eggs, you know, they had to find things. I don't exactly know well, they will organize an, a scavenger hunt or something like that. And, um, and they're really amazing. Yeah. No, that's very impressive that from three, you know, kids, you went to, you said about a hundred. So that, that, that was very impressive. Thank you. Lisa, you also have experience creating a volunteering program in the libraries. Uh, well, you're managing the volunteering programs. Uh, so uh, would you share your experience with us? 
Sure, sure, no problem. Um, thank you for the question. So, I'm part of the team that set up the volunteer community in the newly opened public library that is also one of the largest in Singapore. It's called Pongo Regional Library. So, this library is designed to be an inclusive library where, uh, where we actually stop inputs from the disability community. So, a lot of talks has been put in place in terms of, uh, planning the space, uh, how can we conduct the training to welcome library users of from all walks of life, uh, volunteers are afraid. Uh, how do they even address them? Uh, how do they assist them? So a lot of inquiries from volunteers, uh, even before they start their role. So um, in that library, uh, when we were designing the roles, uh, we we went down to actually find out um, what are some of the roles that the volunteer can play, uh, what are the skill sets that they can uh, they require, and how can we train them so that they uh, volunteers felt that they are equipped to actually perform these roles. So, um, one of the many roles that uh, really stood out was um, we have volunteers actually uh, becoming our library guides. They will conduct tours to bring new library users around the new library. Um, they will help library users with wayfinding, assisting them with the new tech libraries, uh, co-facilitating insurance programs, showings of books, and many more. Um, we also realized that in this new library, um, one of the very important things that we did was we deliberately created a lot of opportunities for volunteers to actually network and know each other even before they volunteer. This created a bond for volunteers to um, know who are their friends and it helps them ease into the role much easily. Um, even before they started volunteering, they started to exchange number and they look forward to actually coming down to the library to do uh, actual volunteering work. So um, this is one of the important learning points that we took away with us uh, while creating this library. And hopefully we are able to mimic uh, such success in other new libraries that are coming up soon. It, it sounds like you're running a really big program. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going off my questions right now because I just got curious. How do you... How how do the volunteers find out about the opportunity of you know coming to the library and being able to volunteer to help the library at least in your case with your program? Yeah, so um in especially in this new case um for for Congo Regional Library this newly opened public library we 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 did our recruitment in our usual method which we have a portal where volunteers can sign up uh create an account they can look for volunteering opportunities. So that is one um, usual way that we normally do. But for Congo Regional Library, we actually went ahead to do something extra. So beyond what we usually have uh, done for recruitment, we, we tap on social media, uh, especially Facebook, Instagram, um, on the National Library Board uh, social media pages to do a shout out uh, to people that are staying around this community. Um, and a lot of them actually, when they come for training, the first thing that they told us was actually, I have been waiting 10 years for your library to open. So this is um, something they are all excited and looking forward to. From there, um, a mixture of uh, social media shout out, uh, words of mouth, uh, volunteers actually informing their friends and family members, all this helped in helping us to boost the recruitment for this new library. Thank you. Um, Natalie, um, so you talked about, you know, the kids volunteering in your library. How, how did it help your library? I guess it helped, uh, because of the, uh, it helped us to actually connect with them because, you know, teenagers are really hard to, um, connect with and uh, it was really interesting because we it changed a lot of things because they've got lots of ideas you know as soon as they are um, confident with someone they will ask things and they will um, give us some lot of ideas and and would I mean it was amazing it, it was sharing things and uh, actually having something we call that in French I don't know the word in English it's inter intergenerationnel it's through generation I mean mm -hmm. everybody will because we had some volunteer elderly volunteers and it was really fun because after that after a, a while some kids will ask us if they can be volunteers so we had kids from uh, 8 years old until um the 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 elderly was uh, 
uh, 81 years old. So it was really um, fun. I mean, it was a lot of fun and, and interesting in, in the ways of making it more, I don't know, it gives value. Volunteering gives value. And when you've got so many people, you just have new ideas and it increase everything. The love, the 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 sharing, the everything. Yeah, thank thank you. Um, and um, for the sort of the last question, I'll go back to either Neda and Joseph. Whoever wants to answer, please go ahead. Um, so you talked about your experience, um, you know, volunteering, and how would you say that that experience help, has helped you either with your job or your studies? So. Neda, if you want to talk about it, or Joseph, um, whoever wants to talk about it, please go ahead. I see Neda okay. is unmuted. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I remember one day that one of uh, uh, one of the volunteer called me and asked to leave since she had uh, found her way and dream job. Uh, I was shocked because she was so talented and we need her in the library. So. Uh, I immediately called her reference and asked him to motivate her to resume her job with us. And he told me something that uh, I, I could say that his words are not as, as, as extensive as my thoughts uh, have expanded since, since then. He told uh, his word is, uh, you should celebrate this moment because this is because of the capacity that enabled her to fly and flee. Uh, Based on this explanation, it would be comprehensible if I discussed a dream job uh, like this, I mean, mentioned volunteer, as it just related to personal skills, but the exact consequence of collective capacity, such as what happened to my career. Uh, volunteering helps me find out where and how I could be more effective and being uh, affected as well. And, uh, and it happens to several library members, volunteers, and a staff that have constructed their career based on the, based on what they've experienced in the library. And moreover, they, they, they dared to change their career as well. Uh, so because there are some participants that they're creating uh, volunteering for the library, I would like to add that volunteers uh, mostly seen uh, from a library perspective. Uh, how it attracts volunteers. For sure, volunteers uh, could help the library with its mission, strategy, programs, and everything. But my point is uh, the, the importance of library milieu and its uh, capacity to increase social engagement. It can help people learn um, how to be more courageous to change their lives and uh, also appreciate their communities um, at the same time. Uh, I mean, the, the, we know that volunteers are important and we do like do volunteering, but, uh, the library milieu or the organization milieu is so important to, uh, to make, uh, I mean, the, the circumstances that give people, uh, more courage to change everything and social forms and, uh, also appreciate, I mean, appreciate this community that they made and they participated to made it. Thank you so much. We are almost at the end of our um, webinar. So I wanted to thank everyone for being here and I will end it with the wonderful thing that Neda said, volunteering really helps us change our lives. It, uh, it's, a, it's a, it, it, it affects us in a way that sometimes right then we don't realize, but after a while we'll realize, oh, it was because of that opportunity that I had. And I also wanted to thank CPDW for being a partner with a New Professional Six with this webinar. And also they have a meme contest. So if you go to their web page, you can participate in it. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for being here and um, celebrating International Volunteer Day with us. And I uh, hope everyone has a good day or a good afternoon, depending on your time zone. Thank you.